Today is the third episode of my Godzilla Grand Prix, meaning it's the third Friday in a row I'm doing a Godzilla-related video. I started by turning the characters into demons, then into dragons, and today into superheroes which is actually a series I've done before on this channel a long time ago, but I'm rebooting it with today's video, because I listened back to those old stories and I was like, yeah, I think I'd rather start fresh. Some of the names carry over, but it's pretty much a totally new series. This video will also contain spoilers for Godzilla multiplied by Kong equals a new empire, because most of the story in this episode is just the story from that movie adapted into a superhero story. I think the transition worked pretty well and could continue into a full new series, so make sure to subscribe if you're new here, leave comments for what other Godzilla monsters you want to see turned into superheroes. But beyond that, let's get into this, shall we? Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. While superheroes obviously spend much of their time and energy thwarting the actions of villains and criminals, it's also not completely uncommon for different heroes to have clashes with one another. One of the most famous examples of this occurred recently between the heroes of neighboring cities. One city, the wildly advanced and world-renowned Kaitoho, a hotbed for new technology and innovation. The other, the island city of Skullpolis, Fairly modern as far as cities go, but more tied to honoring the traditional ways of the native people who'd first lived on the island. Kaitoho is a port city, and the island Skullpolis is on is connected to it by ferries and a bullet train. But one person who was not welcome to use either of those to come to Kaitoho was the resident hero of Skullpolis, Willis Mirian, better known as Gigakong. You see, he'd taken over as the hero of his city after his parents had been killed by one of the most powerful and notorious local gangs, the Skull Strikers, who Willis eventually got under control and imprisoned in the Hollow. That was the name of the prison that sat in the waters between Kaitoho and Skullpolis. But a while after getting many of the villains in his own city under control, he started to notice that Kaitoho was getting more and more overrun, and he thought it was because that bustling city's own local hero, Ishiro Tanaka, aka Alphazilla, wasn't doing his job. You see, Alphazilla was not just a hero to his city, but a global one. He was one of the strongest heroes alive and could travel through water at well over a thousand miles per hour, making him able to get to and help out in global villain incidents quite readily. But Gigakong was starting to notice that the more time he spent globetrotting, the more chaotic his home city was becoming. Gigakong went to Kaitoho to try and talk some sense into Alphazilla, telling him that he had to take better care of his home turf. But when he'd barely made it to the port, Alphazilla arrived to send Kong home. See, Zilla had had many clashes with Kong's parents back in the day, so in turn he'd already decided he wasn't a fan of Willis, and certainly wasn't a fan of a newer, weaker hero trying to tell him what to do. They had a brief dust-up right there in the port, with Zilla thoroughly trouncing Willis before sending him home. You see, Willis's powers were fairly basic, just mid-tier super strength and agility, leagues behind Alpha Zilla's powers, but that also meant Willis had spent far more time training and honing his mind as a tactical fighter. He knew he was going to have to go back to Kai Toho eventually to do Alpha Zilla's job for him, but he needed a way to protect himself better from the quote-unquote hero of that city, in case Alphazilla returned from his global endeavors while Kong was still there. Using research notes his parents had made on Alphazilla, in case they'd ever needed to take him out, Kong developed an axe that could absorb the radioactive blasts a Shiro could shoot. This would charge up the weapon to use right back against Alphazilla. With that in hand, Gigakong set off to Kaitoho the next time Alpha Zilla was gone, and started cleaning up some of the villains Zilla hadn't taken the time to thwart. Hearing of what was happening in his home city, Ishiro quickly returned and attacked Willis, but this time, the crafty hero was prepared. Using his axe as intended, he did the seemingly impossible and stomped Alpha Zilla in a fight, telling him to do better protecting his city, or Gigakong would keep coming back to do it for him. Not a day later, though, Alpha Zilla had recovered and went to Skullpolis for round three. He knew now to quickly get rid of Kong's axe, and without that, it wasn't long before Alpha Zilla was beating Kong to a pulp. He very well may have killed Kong, but mid-fight, they both heard a massive explosion coming from the water. It was the Hollow. Under both heroes' noses, a mad scientist calling himself Dr. Apex had built an android version of Alpha Zilla and sent it to free all the villains locked away by both Willis and Ishiro in the Hollow. They both knew this could mean chaos for both their homes. 
So, reluctantly, they put their feud aside and worked together to take down Dr. Apex and his android. Thereafter, they made a tentative agreement to call on each other for assistance to take down the most dangerous escape members of the Hollow. They still had a lot of beef with each other, but at least agreed to only enter each other's homes when directly invited. But Alphazilla acknowledged that this was something he'd occasionally have to do, including for an upcoming event. See, Alphazilla ended up spending so much energy and strength facing the escaped villains of his city that he needed a charge-up and an upgrade from an old friend who was a bit of a ways away. He knew his city would need a different protector while he was gone, so he reluctantly called in Giga Kong. Giga Kong had managed to recapture much of the Skull Striker gang, aside from their leader, and was on to tracking a flying villain he'd bested before named Kamazot when Alphazilla came to him. Ishiro told Kong that he needed to leave his city for a week, and grudgingly asked Kong to keep an eye on it for him. Willis agreed, in spite of the fact that, along with many villains still rampaging through his home, a very inexperienced young hero, calling himself Ape Scrapper, was causing problems in Skullpolis. He had a tendency to cause a lot of property damage when he tried to take down villains, and just generally wasn't great as a hero yet. He was trying to make a name for himself as Ape Scrapper, but the press was just calling him Mini Kong for his obvious similarities to Giga Kong, and the kid was not thrilled about that. Still though, Kong had been interested in looking into something in Kaitoho, the disappearance of a retired hero named Shimotilla. She was one of the few heroes whose power rivaled Alphazilla, but she'd hung up her supersuit decades ago. Like Alphazilla, her powers made her aging far slower, so she was essentially still in her prime and could have taken up hero work again, but hadn't in ages. And the fact that she was still so powerful made her sudden disappearance all the more concerning. Giga Kong spent the first few days of that week moving between Skullpolis and Kaitoho, facing the odd villain and investigating the area around where Shimotilla had lived. Eventually, though, an unexpected source came to him, claiming to have information on what had happened to the retired hero. The young Skullpolis hero, Ape Scrapper, said to Willis that he had essential info on where Shimotilla was, but said he'd only tell him if Willis made the kid his sidekick. Giga Kong was surprised that this kid would want to be his sidekick, as it had seemed before like the kid wanted to take over as Skullpolis' main hero. But he agreed all the same that if the kid was able to help him find Shimotilla, then they had a deal. He didn't assume that the kid was going to have much info, but astoundingly, Ape Scrapper was able to show Kong security footage of a long-forgotten villain of Alpha Zilla's running through a back alley with an unconscious Shimotilla flung over his shoulder. This villain had been from before Giga Kong's time as a hero, but he did recognize him. Scarex. He'd been a villain from Skullpolis who once tried to lead an army of minions to kill Alpha Zilla and overthrow both Kaitoho and Skullpolis, but Alpha Zilla had teamed up with Shimotilla to take Scarex down. They locked him away in the hollow where he had been ever since. Clearly, though, he'd escaped with the many other villains when Androidzilla had attacked. Giga Kong was then going to call up his most reliable informant and occasional errand boy, a small-time hero named Doug, to look more into this footage. But before he did, Ape Scrapper also claimed to have an unusually specific lead on where to find Scarax. So, Giga Kong cautiously followed along. The kid was taking him to a set of caves that could be accessed through the abandoned subway systems in Kaitoho. But on their way, they had to pause the mission to take out a villain called Aquatine. She was a viper-like villain who usually stuck to the waters between Kaitoho and Skullpolis, but must have come to hide in the subway systems to avoid getting caught by the heroes. Giga Kong could have bested her quite quickly, but he took the opportunity to show Ape Scrapper the ropes of fighting a villain like her. Scrapper was shocked by how helpful Kong was being, and in the end even let the little guy land the final blow, significantly upping his confidence as a young hero. They took Aqua Teen up to the authorities, then continued down but suddenly Ape Scrapper seemed much more hesitant about their mission to find Scarex. <music> Meanwhile, Alpha Zilla had swam out to meet an old ally of his called Tiamite. She didn't have quite the same strength level as Alpha Zilla, but there were many similarities between them, 
including the type of radioactive energy that could fuel both their powers. Tiamite wasn't tied to any specific city like Alphazilla or Gigakong, but spent much of her time on a private boat in the open ocean, often near the Arctic Circle. For some time now, she'd stationed herself there to help wrangle any heroes and villains that took the lawlessness of the open oceans too far. This was something that the Superhero Corrections and Placement Foundation was very grateful for, as they'd had a difficult time trying to track down and control the villains of the seas. Alphazilla showed up to her boat and called in an old favor. See, Tiamite had actually started out as a villain before she was even on the Foundation's radar. She had actually attempted to kill Alphazilla to make a name for herself. Their fight hadn't gone as she'd hoped, though. They were both very proficient underwater, but Tiamite was even more so than Zilla, so she thought she had the upper hand. She created explosions of electricity underwater, could move even faster than a Shiro, and she could spawn clouds of ink that she could see through, but her opponents couldn't. Even still, when she'd attacked Alphazilla, he'd held his own underwater long enough to hurl her up out of the water onto an iceberg to finish the fight on land. Seeing his incredible power, and that she was clearly outmatched, she surrendered and promised to do whatever Alphazilla asked, if he'd not turn her into the authorities or kill her. He'd been skeptical of whether he could trust her, but had noticed how many villains were starting to try and etch out territories of the seas to make their own, cutting off some of his swimming routes to get across the world. He told her to start hunting down other ocean-bound villains and turning them into the Superhero Corrections and Placement Foundation. He also ordered her to be his eyes and ears in the ocean. She agreed to do that and eventually found she enjoyed the hero lifestyle more than being a villain anyway. Not worrying about getting taken down by Zilla or the authorities or any other powerful hero was more relaxing for her. Plus, the Foundation started to pay her for her work. Thereafter, she agreed to help Alpha Zilla with whatever he needed. So, when he came to her requesting a charge-up, she was happy to give him one. They spent a few days of Tiamite channeling her own energy into Ishiro's body, and over that time his body began to glow pink, and he became leaner and faster. By the end of that time, Tiamite was drained and exhausted and needed to recharge herself. But she'd done as needed, and Ishiro was fired up and ready to go take down the remaining escaped villains from the Hollow. Which was good because Gigakong was going to need the help more than Ishiro yet knew. Gigakong and Ape Scrapper had gone farther down into the subway tunnels to a set of dugout caves, but before they reached the path's end, Scrapper stopped Willis. He confessed that a week ago, he'd followed some goons that had been hired by Scarax and was going to try and take them out himself, but then they'd captured him and brought him to their villain leader. Scarax had told the kid that he had a plan to take over both Skullpolis and Kaitoho, and that the kid could either die right then and there, or he could lure Gigakong down into the tunnels to be killed. If he did that, Scarex would let Scrapper continue to work as a hero under his rule. Scrapper had taken the deal, but was obviously now second-guessing the decision and didn't want Kong to die. Willis thanked the kid for admitting what he was doing, but continued down into the caves anyway, stating that he could beat Scarex and end all of this, not heeding the boy's warning that Scarex had a secret weapon. Kong reached an open, carved-out lair where a few dozen minions were prepping weapons and training. Kong leapt into the center of the lair and called out for Scarex to reveal himself. The villain did so, joining Kong in the center of the lair, twirling his whip. He told Kong that had he and Alphazilla fought him and his forces together, maybe they'd have had a chance of stopping him. But getting to fight the two city's heroes one at a time meant there was no chance his plans could fail. Giga Kong didn't see a loss as likely, though. He attacked Scarex, and the villain did fare better than Kong expected, but Willis was able to land far more hits than his foe and get him dazed and stumbling back. Though Scarex didn't seem to mind, he tapped a glowing blue watch he wore and said he'd let his reluctant ally finish Kong off. Kong was suddenly blasted from behind by a beam of ice that froze his arms solid. He turned to see Shimotilla stomping towards him, clearly trying to tell him to run, but having no control over what her body was doing. See, Scarex had taken a fragment of the crystalline energized spikes that emerged from Shimotilla's body and brought it to Dr. Apex, who had managed to escape from the Hollow himself after being locked up for creating the android Zilla. 
He then forced the mad scientist to make a device using this shard that could allow Scar X to telepathically control Shimotilla's actions. And now the once retired hero was his puppet. Gigakong knew that now he was outmatched with Scar X, his minions, and Shimotilla there, so he ran, grabbing and carrying Scrapper out with him. As soon as he reached the surface, he called on Alpha Zilla. And luckily, the hero was just returning to his home city. The two met up and Gigakong told Ashira what was happening, that Shimotilla was under Scar X's control. But that just seemed to make Alpha Zilla more eager for the fight ahead. He knew he could handle Scar X as he had long before, but he'd always wanted to try testing his might against Shimotilla. There'd just never been any reason to fight as the two had always been allies. Now at least he had an excuse. Just in case things went south though, and seeing that Kong was injured, Zilla called in another ally of his, one who could heal them both up. Masumoth, the airborne revival hero, joined Kong, Zilla, and Scrapper just as Scar X was leading his forces to the surface. Kong cracked all the ice off of his arm, and Masumoth healed him, but the limb still felt a little bit weak. So Willis dialed up his buddy Doug. He told Doug to go to his Kong cave and bring a piece of an exoskeleton armor that he'd been developing. Kong did his best to fight until the arrival of this upgrade, but luckily Alpha Zilla was tearing through Scar X's minions with his power up, with his pink atomic beams blasting away and knocking out anyone that came at him. Any of the weaker foes, that is. Scar X sent Shimotilla right after Ashiro and attacked him himself as well, with the two having a fairly easy time laying out the charged up hero. Scar X used his whip to hold back Zilla's arms as Shimotilla laid into him with incredible strength, then froze half his body in a block of ice. The cold wasn't nearly as harmful to him as it could be to Willis, but it could still keep him from moving much. That is, until Kong finally leapt in with his upgraded arm and smashed away the ice with one hit. A four-way battle ensued with the city anxiously watching on. Skarix's forces seemed like they were gaining the upper hand for a while. Until Shimotilla just stopped attacking. She turned to Skarix and sneered angrily, saying, How dare you try to control me? He looked down at his arm to see why his watch wasn't working, but it was gone. He darted his head around until he saw that Ape Scrapper was dangling it in the air a few meters away, having snatched it off the distracted villain's wrist. Before Scar X could come at him, the little hero smashed the watch on the ground, shattering it to pieces. There was no controlling Shimotilla now. She immediately froze Scar X in a block of ice, then helped Gigakong, Alpha Zilla, and the brave little Ape Scrapper finish off the rest of the villain's goons. Both cities were then saved again, and Shimotilla was free once more to go back into retirement. Though, this whole ordeal had reawakened her love of hero work, and she told both Kong and Zilla that if either of them ever needed a hand, they could feel free to call her in. The whole event also helped pave more friendship between the heroes of Skullpolis and Kaitoho, and they agreed to start tracking down more of the escaped villains from the Hollow together. Of course, with Kong also now bringing along his new sidekick, Ape Scrapper. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend checking out my Godzilla Monsters as Demons video, or my Godzilla Dragons Part 4 episode. Also, coming up on Monday, I'm going to be releasing a compilation of all of my My Singing Monsters as Fantasy Beasts episodes, but with one new drawing and lore at the start. A bunch of different things kind of stacked up in March to make it a bit of an emotionally draining month. Nothing big and bad, just a lot of little small things all stacked together. And then spending way longer than I thought I would on making the death of Benny Sharp, the funniest video in the history of this channel. Kind of pushed me over the edge to be like, okay, I need to take a couple days off this week. But worth it, because that video was so good. <laughs> but after that, I've got some fun stuff coming up, including the release of some original stories of mine called Vigilance, but I'll probably explain that more later. And besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote from an unknown source, and that's that you should get in the habit of asking yourself regularly, does this support the life I want to create? Don't even know if I need to add anything to that one. I think it's just a good question to repeat and ask yourself at semi-regular intervals. I hope that's inspiring. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video on Monday. Goodbye.